don't yell. Well, you talk loudly. <laughs> I don't yell. Yeah. Trevor, I don't <laughs> yell. <laughs> yo, fuck y'all, man. All right, so let me let me talk for like twenty seconds. Hey, yo, what's up? Good baby, chill in my ass. Uh, David, you keep leaving us like the father you are. Oh. <laughs> yo, your dick is so nice. Yo, that's dope. <laughs> yo, your girlfriend look like my mom. <laughs> that's dope. It's All right. time to pod. It's time to p -p 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 pod. Yeah. You and your Pokemon references. What? <laughs> <laughs> no! Rocio, I assume you've prepared to do the intro. Oh, oh no! Yeah, baby. Absolutely we not. I forgot to tell her that. Ah, what? beautiful people welcome to a special spooky edition of the unboxing life podcast i am your host for this evening rocio accompanied by my friends alex what's going on everybody cam hello everybody david hey and trevor wow <laughs> you gotta be so unenthusiastic Ooh. about that one bro her face like went from a smile to you know not not <laughs> that Dude, she hate uh, yeah she, she hates said, me said trevor why 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 <laughs> you got such negative feelings towards trevor rosia she has such animosity for me i don't know i haven't yes, uh, really met him word. before until today oh, okay. i feel a little uncomfortable yeah that's fine i kind of dragged her off the street to get on the podcast because i just i figured we needed like uh you know ambassador like for women mm -hmm. so yeah we needed mm -hmm. to do the whammy and things <laughs> the yeah we needed a we needed a token like we need a token, token female. woman, yeah, yeah. token female. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, that's the okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Without further ado, we are we are we are recording on October thirtieth, which is the day before Halloween. But mm -hmm. we're gonna give y'all a special spooky edition anyway because fuck it. I'm imagining. So, yeah. um, I'm imagining if someone's listening to this for the first time and they just think we're actually just assholes and that Rocio is just <laughs> like some random. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, for, it's the truth so all right properly. you need to stop <laughs> being so, narratives so i think mm. properly introduce yourself um you've been mentioned multiple times on the podcast before so it should be <laughs> multiple easy. times once at least once in every episode are you complaining i count <laughs> no I count. You... i'd be really sad if i didn't hear it one day okay so continue okay okay so cool. who are you oh hi i'm rocio i'm trevor's um wife Okay, girlfriend. We don't like the uh, word girlfriend because it's it's okay. really cringe. <laughs> oh, really? All right. That's an interesting. Girlfriend is cringe. It's an interesting you take. Girlfriend's cringe. You don't say you... boyfriend. So wife is better. You yes. introduce me as your wife. I say that. I said that to Cody yesterday when I talked about going to dinner. Oh, okay. I said let me say talk to partner. the wife. Yeah, partner. We're not gay. Partner. Twenty twenty. Everyone says partner. You freak. We're not. We're oh, not we're gay. Don't matter. It S. don't S. matter. Significant other. Anyway. Yeah. So, anyways so yes so that Rocio's, is your relationship with my cast. partner yep cool. yeah and i've been wanting to get her on the podcast for a while now so she's she's a little nervous bull but i told her that you guys were pretty comforting as friends so yeah and you, you know how that? how people always say like you get cold feet when you're like really nervous that actually like physically happens to me and my hands that's so hilarious. earlier clammy yeah earlier i like reached my hand out to Trevor and I'm like feel my hand is just like ice cold and like sweating. Yeah, it was really it's weird. It's awful. Dang. That's what I'm feeling. That's I get really really going. cold hands, but that's just like all the time. Well, so yeah. Well, we hope we can you we can ease your nerves with this. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. My hands are warming up as we speak. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. We appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get this shit going. You. you want to let's talk start. about our, our traditions? Yeah. Let's have a. Uh, Let's have the, the woman do it for the first. The woman. Let's have the female yeah. the woman. first. If you're going to say right. it like that, you got to say it like they say it in Sherlock Holmes. The woman. I've never watched it. The oh, woman. you're missing out. All right, anyway, go ahead. All right. Okay, so, you... so I have a little spooky fact for the week. I know I am imposing in Cam's territory. You're good. Sorry about that. I'm happy to share um, it. Thank mm. you, thank you. So the reason why mummies are so difficult to find is because we pretty much ate them all. 
Hmm? What? <laughs> I don't know about um, me. <laughs> <laughs> I assume you're gonna elaborate. I'm, I'm giving. I'm. I'm leaving I mean, the floor to you. If, if you wish. Um, in the six. I wish. Sense, I do 17th. wish. I want to know why yeah. we ate all the mummies. Yeah, I would like to know that. Brendan Fraser also would like to know because he took his job. <laughs> yeah. So like the Victorian era, a lot of people believed that if you ate like the the decaying flesh of a mummy or um the teeth or whatever it was good for like medicinal purposes it would elongate your life um some people would actually crush up like mummy remains and use it as brown paint so yeah mm -hmm. we ate them we used it for medicine and we painted houses with them is the nice Victorian and now era... it's hard to find is that like the 1800s when is that it's 16th century. Uh, I think it's the 16th and 17th centuries. So mm. 15 and 16th. Okay, way before. Yeah. yeah. Rich people do so weird really fucking shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you have if you have money, you definitely have a weird fetish. Rich people mm -hmm. are the most bizarre motherfuckers on the planet. That's you know, um, <laughs> especially with like one of the branches of anthro is archaeology, right? And they talk about archaeology starting as literally just rich people going places that had ruins and just like looting it and taking it back and they would put it in their their parlors and their cabinets of curiosity and they would like show off all this cool shit that they stole from grave sites in foreign countries to their friends when they had parties nice mm -hmm. that's wild yeah a lot of grave robbing during that time mm -hmm. loads, just absolutely yeah no remorse well well, I'm about to grave rob a dad joke from Alex so hit us uh -oh. with your dad joke baby <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll ask one this one to Rocio, because she's the guest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Why did the ghosts go to the bar? I don't want to answer it, so go ahead. Yes, <laughs> tell me why. <laughs> For the booze. <laughs> nice. Yes. I that was your best one. one. That was the the What's the proper etiquette when the other person knows like what the answer is? Do I just you just let them tell it? Entertain uh, you? Yeah, okay. I guess. Yeah. You go I, along I with it. You play dumb. Yeah. I never, yeah. I never know the act, the answer, so I just oh, always really? like ruin the, the joke. Yeah. I know the I answer know like half the time, but he's getting yeah. better. Wow. He's getting wow. better. No, that was that was a good one. That's your best one. Fantastic. You stayed well, the best I mean, for last. I, I follow r slash jokes, so they like get recycled uh -huh. on there pretty often. Uh, wow. oh, I have okay well okay I'm gonna get a second tradition now. oh my god so, nice. this is why we don't have women on here <laughs> stop you're being stupid okay <laughs> that was adorable <laughs> yeah I'm sure that's why um, okay stupid. no I have a joke too uh, a spooky joke so um Alex I'll throw it back at you alright so why do ghosts enjoy um going on elevators because they like to go up no, because it lifts their spirits. Hey! hey. We lit! We lit for sure. We go super yeah. lit. <laughs> okay. Let's that go. Good. All right, that's it. Proceed. <laughs> Cam, you want to hit us with your, <laughs> us with your fun fact? Yes. So it's a it's a long one today. Pause. Um, oh, boy. Um, Here we go. But it's, it's, a, it's a fun one, I think. Um, and then I have a special Halloween event. I want to bone after. <laughs> yeah, so y'all are just Overwatch events today. Yeah, it's going to be a long... Yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> Overwatch events. So... You giving us... What? Are you giving us a new skin? Or at least some free loot boxes today? You're kind of trash. <laughs> okay. Man, come on, bro. I'm sorry. Go you're ahead. Making, you're making such yeah, ass know. references right now, dude. All right. <laughs> that's, not, that's my entire life, dog. Yeah. <laughs> you have your highs and lows. Um, War Strike right. on Prime. So, I'm, <laughs> oh my wow. God. I, I literally can't not do it. I know, dude. It's like I don't know if I've talked about it on the podcast before that I play this game where I just like say a song lyric that's in the middle of a random song on a random album, and like Trevor will just like auto complete it in his head and say it out loud without like yeah. it's a tick. It's not like something he controls. It's just like, and it'll drive him insane if he can't figure out which one it is. It's like musical Tourette's. Yeah. Anyway, not, to, not to make light of Tourette's, but it is kind of like that, yeah. Um, there you go. So, anyway. Um, I'm going to start with the timeline. 
the first point, it's just a two-point timeline. The first point is in 1963, Alcatraz completely shut down. It closed. They boarded up the walls, whatever. Mm-hmm. October 1969, six years later, um, the American Indian Center of San Francisco burns down in an accident, I believe. Um, so here's where the fact begins. An activist group, which called themselves Indians of All Tribes, made an attempt to seize Alcatraz in the early morning hours of November 20th, 1969, with an occupation force of 89 men, women, and children. After sailing through San Francisco Bay under cover of darkness, the Indians landed at Alcatraz and claimed the island for all tribes of North America. Ignoring warnings that their occupation was illegal, they moved into the old warden's house and guard's quarters. The Indians' first official proclamation to the public followed shortly thereafter in a manifesto addressed to the Great White Father and all his people. In it, they stated their intentions to use the island for an Indian school, cultural center, and museum. They claimed Alcatraz was theirs, quote, by right of discovery, end quote, but they sarcastically offered to buy it for, quote, $24 in glass beads and red cloth end quote, which was the same price that the Indians supposedly received after they were re- removed from the island of Manhattan. Yikes. Wow. The activists wow. added that they didn't mind that the island was underdeveloped or lacked fresh water, since most of them had already endured similar conditions on government Indian reservations. Oh my god. Mm. Yeah, so, no, that's fucked up. Every time I hear Alcatraz, I think of Azkaban now. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a prison on islands. Sometimes. Yeah. Mm. What's funny about like you don't even go to Alcatraz or Alcatraz. You don't go to Azkaban in the books. Like that that is I guess that's the one place that she didn't go to. Like she went to Gringotts, she did like the you know, she always does like it's a, a stunning locale scene, I mean. and then she'll bring it later. But she didn't she never did that. Hmm. Kind of weird. Maybe she just wanted to leave it like mysterious. To your, yeah, to your yeah. Yeah. Did she ever describe it? Uh just that it's an pieces. island prison. Just like it's, yeah. I mean, she focused on the dementors every time she talked about it. But. Yeah. Cool. But anyway, well, anyway, so that's my fun fact. I hope you guys liked it. It was a bit of a story. so. How did more than a so fact. their their building burnt down? How did that happen? I think it was just an accident. Oh, all right. I didn't. Dang. I didn't see that's that as so part true. of the thing. It burned down. All right, well, that's wild. Huh? You just blew David's mind. <laughs> Yeah. Moving on, I would <laughs> like to hear on. your other your other fun fact. Great. So, this is kind of a fact and kind of a game. So, I wanted to do this. So, first is going to be individual, and then I'm going to split you guys into teams. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so, are you ready? so, how much money do you think Americans spend on Halloween each year? Uh, e- each of you. I don't even want to know so, the answer. I don't have question. any concept so want, of money. I want you to. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best answer so you're I'll gonna give a really good guess it'll be dope if you're correct so how much so americans go to the stores and they spend money on a bunch of shit how much does that total on average each year do you guys think rocio you guess first or you can guess last if you want to hear other guesses since you say you have no concept okay. of money <laughs> yes yeah, so i okay. got like some ballpark too. all right trevor you go first i'll do shit 3.5 bill okay wow David, I was gonna say three billion. So, <laughs> so billion? billion, yeah, billion. So Alex, yeah. Uh, on it, like I, I don't know why you're surprised because billion, like in terms of the entire country for one like like holiday that they like do an entire month on, a couple billion is nothing. Like we are yeah, almost but... like we're almost like thir- fourteen million, or, like trillion in debt. So <laughs> billion is nothing. <laughs> Wait, but, okay, so you're talking about like in terms of like costumes. Yeah, and like Andy anything, and anything associated with. That type of... Yeah. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Anything that could be called Halloween spending. Anything you're doing specifically for Halloween. I don't think it's in the billions. Dang. Okay. Well, then what is it? I'm gonna say. I mean, earlier I was talking about the Biggie hat sold for six hundred thousand. So I'm gonna say like two hundred and twenty-two million. Okay. Okay. That was okay. weird math. Uh, <laughs> Re- <laughs> yeah, Re- yeah. That's equivalent to like 66 biggie hats. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, 66. If, if Biggie sold for 600K, then we spent $220 million on Halloween. The weirdest, yeah. the, weirdest, yeah. the weirdest high school textbook math problem ever. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Billy uh, has 14 yeah. biggie hats. Tell me I'm right. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's okay. They cost thousand uh, dollars each. Um. Okay. So Rocio, David, it's time David. for you to guess. No, wait, wait, wait. What? Oh wait, David said it. Yeah, no, David said it. Yeah, David oh, okay. Um. Well, in my head, before everyone said their numbers, I said thirteen million, but now I realize <laughs> it's probably way too small. <laughs> um. Let's say. Uh. A solid one mi- one billion, one okay. billion. One billion. Okay. Let's go there. Okay. Yeah. This is like the Price is Right. Yeah. I know. Okay. Yeah. So you guys, ha- Alex and Rocio, you guys do win the award for having no concept of money. Um, <laughs> it's talking about. It's nine billion dollars every year. Okay. Damn. Damn. Was, my next okay. guess is going to be like thirteen. So. Okay. Yeah. So the next bit here is I want to do like a Family Feud bit. <laughs> So I want to do Trevor and <laughs> Rocio versus um, David and Alex. Me and David? David and Alex, yeah. Come on, David. Yeah. We, Let's we, go. We, we. Okay. Yeah. So do you guys know how Family Feud works where I ask yes. the – Okay. Everyone does? We don't have a buzzer, but yes. <laughs> I mean, you can just go, eh. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so for, the first, for the first round, which determines which team gets, like, first crack at, at the category, is Trevor versus David, Okay. 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 So if you say if you if you have an answer, it can be any of the four answers. Um, but yeah. if you have an answer, you say it, and then you get to okay. So the top four answers are on the board. What are the four <laughs> things that Americans spend the most money on for Halloween? <laughs> I think uh, David was first. Costumes. Okay. I'm going candy. That's, yeah, <laughs> costumes. Costumes is on there. So David get David and uh, and Alex get the play. Yeah. Hey. Okay, so that's the number one Wait. spot. Um, okay, let's go. Uh, Americans Wait, spend so three point three point two billion dollars on on costumes each Halloween. Jesus oh, fuck! Wow. Dang. All right. All right. So Alex, tough. You got three answers on the board. What are the four things that Americans spend the most money on for Halloween? <laughs> Candy. Okay, candy's on there. Candy is sure. at the at the number three spot. With number three. two point six billion in spending. Okay, so what? Where was costumes at? So David, it's your turn now. Okay, costumes number one, candy number three. Yeah. Uh, you got two things left. Is decorations separate? Oh. Decorations. Okay. Decorations is separate. Decorations is number two with uh, two point seven billion. And Let's I, do it, Alex. I'm very wondering. I'm okay. I'm not gonna say anything. All right, Alex, it's your okay. turn. See, uh, see, I don't know if like, I don't know. Maybe like, I don't know if this. I don't know if it counts. May, I was gonna say, Halloween movies. Hmm. That's good. Guess. That's good. Okay. That's good. That's good. Okay, I'll All take right. that as a get. Yeah, everyone. Good guess. Good guess. Everyone claps. Everyone claps. <laughs> yeah. Um, movies is incorrect. So that's strike one. Oh frick! Uh, so, so David, I think I'll do two strikes. Oh wow! So, so one that, more. So that Trevor and. Rusty, at least have a chance. Yeah, so we can play. It's our turn on the Xbox. Our turn. Okay, okay. Uh, frick me. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's our turn on the Xbox. I guess. Uh, David, don't eat the mic like that. Jesus Christ! Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor visits for all the candy. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's smart, actually. <laughs> <laughs> There's something there. Oh my god! No, that is that is not it. Dang. Um, it's I'll, yeah. I'll I'll give a hint because I think it's hard. Um, it's well, <laughs> definitely it's definitely something that like not our generation would buy. Oh, wow. that throws a wrench in what we uh, buy. Okay, that definitely not that. I have a chance to steal. It's like way more rare for our generation to buy this item than uh, you know, uh, the older generation. Right, right. I might know, but. <laughs> oh my god! What? That was actually. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> that's a that funny would joke, be insane. It's probably that's high. A funny joke. It's probably high. Um, For those who didn't hear, he just said condoms. <laughs> huh. I think, unless I'm just fucked up. Okay, no, Halloween. no it, that's what I said, but I didn't, that's not right. <laughs> Halloween. No, it's not right. <laughs> what kind of Halloween goes over there? Well, we were, we were going to go with alcohol, but you said that, that what you just said kind of throws a wrench oh, in that idea. Yeah, so. alcohol would be a really good guess. I wonder if they even they probably don't include that in this, honestly, because it's not considered like Halloween. <laughs> it's spending. not. Yeah, but a lot of people do. 
They get loaded. Yeah, it's probably. Um, I mean, so that's it's every like holiday. a solid Halloween thing, like an item. It's it's variable. You could do you could buy these for um, a very like varied any basically any holiday. Mm. Okay. I know this is very um, unfair that I'm basically giving you every hint in the book and they had nothing to go off of, but they got three and you only get to try one, so I feel like it's fair in terms of oh nothing I, I actually wins anyway. Us, I think what yeah. you're doing is making everybody more confused. I think so. I mean, it's... Okay. I mean, just guess. Cause every holiday. I would I would not we're, guess it. All right. We're going to go with pumpkins. Mm. That's a good guess as well. It's not pumpkins. Yeah. Okay. It is yeah, we have no idea. Uh, greeting cards. Oh, I was thinking uh, that too. I, that, I, dude, my, my head went to Hallmark for some reason, just yep. like ah, oh, nice. yeah. yeah, that's it. funny. Halloween people, cards. People man. spend. We'll still be spending money. People spend four hundred million on greeting cards every Halloween. Why? Season. What? For Halloween? Like yeah. I get it for Christmas, but jeez. Yeah, that's, that's why. That's why I said it's not away. something that like usually oh, our generation does. Because I only I get a Halloween card from my grandmother every uh, every hmm. year. And from, I've never and usually, received usually a Halloween gift card from my parents. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's because <laughs> it's, Honestly, it's, funny, yeah. it's it's yeah. only because I'm in college a thousand miles away. They wouldn't, they wouldn't like I wouldn't if I was in the same house. She wouldn't like go out and buy a card and like give it to me <laughs> in the house. Um, yeah, but that was fun. I like my uh, my grandmother. Yeah. Even, though we didn't, even though we didn't get to play, my grandmother. Yeah, you get to sorry about that. I tried to make a fix. Um, but even though my grandmother is, is uh, super cute, she sends me like five bucks every Halloween with a card, and she's like, go buy yourself a candy bar. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. It's nice. adorable. Cute. Yeah. Nice. Shout out to Grandma. I love it. Oh, Shout out to Grandma. Grandma Blaze. Yeah. Mary Ellen. Dope. All right. Well, we are not even out of the traditions yet. But... I guess I'll go. It's a right. super quick quote. I uh, I forget which book she says it in, but it's from it's from Harry Potter, and it says, "Never trust anything that can think for itself if you can't see where it keeps its brain." Spooky. Interesting. Yeah. Dang. It's I I think it's in the earlier books. Yeah. Probably. Like that's like advice for Harry and stuff. Like. Hmm. I think What's that's that? I think that's the is the second book when he gets the monster book of monsters. From Hagrid, no, he, that's he third. starts teaching. Yeah, that's the third one. That's the third, third one. Yeah. Okay, that's that's probably when they say it. Like, never trust a book that you can't see where it keeps its brain, like stuff like that. Oh right. It might be. That okay. one. I don't know, but I thought that was a cool quote for Halloween. For sure, yeah. All right. Dang. All right, baby, hit us with your Daddy David <laughs> track of the week, <laughs> Juicy Man. Okay, I'll get a look up when the song came out. <laughs> Rocio said ew. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Uh, first of all, i got to give a freaking warning for this. When did it come out? 96 or something? What kind of warning? Uh, this is um, a content warning. This is not a fun song. Um, okay. It's literally probably the darkest song I've ever heard. Um, up there with maybe like Stand by Eminem is another one, but um, I think it's it's a great Halloween song. But like, if depictions of like brutal violence are not your thing, if then you, it's totally... if you say Kim, I was gonna say no, no, no. I said Trevor, no, Trevor, no, and, I, Trevor and I were both thinking if you say Kim, we're both just gonna beat your ass right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Kim. like you would literally be insane to do that. So, oh so I knew it God. wasn't gonna be that, but like the way you're describing it is like it could be that. So, because no, since you said Stan, but yeah, fucking Christ. Kim is also dark, but no. Um, it is a hip hop classic known okay. as Dance with the Devil by Immortal Technique. Has anyone heard this? I have not. I can't okay. I, have. I knew I knew Alex would be the only one. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Dance with the Devil. Crazy. Yeah, this is a uh, classic pretty much. Um, although, right? no. Why, do, why am I thinking that? I don't know. <laughs> oh, inspect the deck. That's why. Eyes. Never mind. Dang. But uh, I think it has like a classical music sample. It's got a great beat. And it's basically like a six and a half minute story track about this guy. Um, I don't want to give too much away, I guess. But it's like a cautionary tale. And it's super creepy and dark. And if you're into that kind of thing, there you go. Cool. 
that's all, all right. I'll say, I guess. Yeah. Can you give us the track name again? Yeah, Dance with the Devil by Immortal Technique. Cool. Yeah. That came out in like the 2000s, right? Oh, really? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Fun fact if you look up Dancing with the Devil on Spotify, there's a lot of songs called Dancing with the Devil. Yeah, it's uh, a very, very, very common yeah. It's a very old but saying, yes. It's Dance with the Devil, so not dancing, just so everyone can search mm. it. Yeah. All right. There you go. All right. Okay, so I, I typed in Dance with and got Dance with the Devil by Immortal Technique immediately. So Yeah, it's go. super, super famous. It's like a, a lot of people consider it like a masterpiece. So. It's it's an interesting bit of hip hop history for sure. And it goes yeah. with Halloween, I guess. So. I love it when you do that. When you're like, "Have you guys heard of it?" No, you haven't. It's considered a masterpiece. Like basically, yeah. basically, <laughs> basically everyone loves it. I was like, "Okay, David." Uh, basically, everyone with a brain. Has basically, heard of it. <laughs> nah, nah. It's yeah, it's um, very understandable if you don't want to listen to this song. So there you go. But it's dope. <laughs> cool. All right. I would like to move on to stories first. I want to read yes. stories. So we're going to read some creepy stories like we did on our drunk podcast a few, few weeks back. But we're going to be sober so we can actually get through the stories. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, I told a so, summary of a story that got completely cut because we were just so <laughs> sloshed and tired that it was such a stumble. Yeah, that was, that, it was, that was awful. It was ugly. <laughs> we were all just like, should we fucking end the podcast? Yeah, like, that <laughs> like was yeah, we should probably point, just dude. go to bed. <laughs> it was like, I went and hugged the toilet. Yeah, we started at like 11 a.m. and then recorded for like two and a half hours, and we're all super drunk. So 11 a.m. 11 a.m. 11 p.m. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a, it was a late that would have been brutal. Yeah, <laughs> just blind drunk in the middle of a Friday, and like <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed. Jesus Christ! Yeah, not that 11 p.m. Do you have your story? Uh, yeah, it's on my laptop. All right, go ahead and get it. Mm, okay. Who's Just watch the watch the cord. Yeah. So, All right, so I found this one on Reddit by a user called Hyper Obscura. And okay, it's not too long. All right. Get close to the mic. Yeah. I'll I'll hold it up for you. Okay. Settle in. All right, spooky voice turned on. Let's go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm looking for someone to take care of my beautiful, beautiful boy. He is well behaved, probably around seven, dirty blonde hair, one tongue, two eyes, a head, and a neck. I suspect he was born with legs and arms, but I can't be sure of this, as he might have grown them later. He goes by the name of the end of the world, but you can just call him Isaac. You can feed him, but he does not require sustenance most days. He'll eat the scabs off your wounds or the loose skin hanging from the edges of your fingernails. Yuck. Or any part of your body, dead or not, should the need arise. He bathes himself regularly in various liquids and generally doesn't smell. That is to say, you'll get used to it over time. By that I mean, you'll learn to not use your nose around him. Cellular memory, I believe they call it. He does not talk back or indeed talk at all. He might attempt to signal you with your eyes, or with his eyes, though, so you'll quickly learn to recognize the sound of them dangling against each other. Please do not let him wait. He will not hesitate to crawl into your mind. He is such a sweetheart, though. He will, su he will sit for hours just staring at you, eyes touching eyes. Should he suddenly slither away, please let him. Do not attempt to follow or restrain him. Should he bring home friends? I'd suggest leaving the house for a bit. The sounds can be pretty intense. He'll clean up after himself, but I wouldn't be around for that part either. You'll slowly waste away, but that's okay. It's natural. You don't need your organs on the inside. That's medical propaganda. Lies. <laughs> they work just fine on the outside too. Black boils shaped like screaming faces on your skin? Perfectly manageable. Quite becoming even. Spongy placenta mushrooms sprouting oh. in and around your genitals. Ew, ew, I don't Jesus like this part. <laughs> ew, I don't want to say this part. <laughs> Give me that part. Delicious. Tastes just like murder. Ew, okay. Okay. Read that. Delicious. Okay. Okay, continuing. This is a gift, an honor. Remember that. Isaac needs you. He needs you now, and the world needs Isaac. If you're reading this, it's you know. Late. 
<laughs> Deep down, you know. You know that the world is a hate-filled, black, bulging cyst of corpse vomit ready to burst. Okay. He will make sure it happens. He needs someone to help him grow, is all. It's a small price to pay, wouldn't you agree? Your body, your sanity, your life, your soul. He sees you now. He feels you. The moment you internally processed his name, he became aware of you. He wants you. Do not be afraid when he comes. When he one day slides into your bed, let his tongue caress your eyes. Let his eyes caress your tongue. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> his oozing pus flesh will feel strange against your skin. Hey, listen up. <laughs> will feel strange against your skin at first. But with time, you will not only accept it, you will come to cherish it, to love it. Please take care of him until you no longer can. Thank you. All righty. All, All right. That, that didn't give me like creepy goosebumps. I feel like I just need to go take a shower. Yeah. <laughs> the pus was a little I much. I just feel dirty. I never yeah. thought I'd hear the, oh, the term God. placenta mushrooms. Yeah. Uh, that was yeah. why. That sounded like some doom shit. I totally read Jeez. over that part, and I wish no, I didn't. But <laughs> God, that was brutal. Did you guys like it? Yeah. No. It yeah, crazy. in the nasty kind of way, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> nasty and nasty and creepy. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you, Rocio. Dang. What? I got a process. Yeah. All right. So she wants you guys to go first. I, I guess I'll go last. Okay. I guess uh, I want to hear Alex's voice. Let's do Alex. You want to hear me? All right. I want to hear you, baby. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you a breakdown. I was, I was. I love breakdowns. Uh -huh. I love, I love, I know you love breakdowns. <laughs> 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 so, um, I was looking at uh, at some brothers Grimm stories. They write, they wrote some some creepy mm. shit. Hansel and, and a Gretel. Lot of, a lot of uh, yeah. some some stories that you know were ba were based off the brothers Grimm. So this one I'm about to talk about is Cinderella. The okay. Story of Cinderella. They You're telling the original Cinderella story? Yeah, the Grimm's brother. Dope. Cinderella I've never story. heard this one. So. Nope, fired no, up. Yeah. 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 So basically, her fa Cinderella, we all know who Cinderella is. Her father, yeah. she, her father was wealthy, and her mother died, and eventually her father remarried, which is, which is where the stepmother and her stepsisters come in. And then her father died, and so the stepmother and their stepsisters inherited all their all his wealth, and she was for like that house is Cinderella's house, but they pretty much made her like uh, do all their work like a maiden or like a slave, pretty much you could yep. say. Uh, even though it's her house, like they they did some stuff like they took away her bed. She had to sleep by the fire, and and uh, the story says the cinders on her that made her dirty from the fire is how she got her name cinderella uh -huh. like, so that's not that's not her real name it's just no one knows what her real name is but uh -huh. yeah so according to wdw magic forums it's mary beth ella gertrude <laughs> well, okay. what an ugly name. Oh, that's that's, that's the that's in disney's yeah. version of the tale though uh, um, okay. <laughs> that's nice that's, but, really that's nice. <laughs> Whatever. But she had, so she had like a grave where her mother was buried, and she was growing a tree next to her mother's grave. But she watered the tree every day with her tears. Hmm. Uh, and so over the over the years, the tree grew, and there was birds on the tree. And the birds in the story are kind of like the birds in the movie, like the animals. How they like interact and help her, and so. The prince announces a ball where to find a wife, except in the in the story, the ball is more like a three day festival. So he does it over three days, and so when C Cinderella has a dress, the birds bring her a dress. Like it doesn't like there's no fairy godmother. The birds just kind of like hand her a dress and the slippers, <laughs> uh, and so she could go to the ball that way. And then I forget why I forget why exactly she had to leave, but. It, but like they were dancing and then she ran away the first night and the prince kind of followed her but lost her and the second night the same thing happened she danced with him all night until the end and she ran away 
But the third night, the prince knew that she was going to run away. So he put tree sap all over the stairs of like the palace. And so when she ran away, her slipper came off. And then that's how he sought out to find uh, all the who fits, whoever fits the slipper. When she gets to their house, the stepmother's house, the uh, the two sisters try on the slipper. The first sister, her big toe was too big to fit the slipper, so she cut off her big toe. Ah, uh, man! Yeah, to fit the slipper, and then the prince was so happy that she fit the slipper, but then realized that there was a lot of blood in the slipper. So he's like, this "Yeah, <laughs> that's yucky." The second so, oh, sister. Man. You you realize it's, deal was it's glass, big. right? Like I can see through the slip. I can see yeah. that your toe is gone. <laughs> it's a fucking glass right. slipper. Exactly. You idiot. <laughs> exactly. The the second sister's heel was too big. So she cut off a part of her heel to fit yeah. the slipper. How does that so work? Same thing God, happened. Man. He said there's blood there, you ain't it. Uh, <laughs> So he just cleaned the slipper, and then he's like, hey, yo, do the this. The story doesn't say he cleans it. So <laughs> just reuse it. Cinderella steps in a bloody slipper. So they just get hepatitis like that? So when, so <laughs> I guess, so Cinderella, obviously, she fits the slipper, and then he takes her as his wife. And But it doesn't end there. It ends at the their wedding reception. The stepmother and the daughter show up. It doesn't really explain why they showed up. Either there. Maybe they were there to get on Cinderella's good side. Or maybe they were just there to just be spiteful. But the, but the birds that Cinderella was friends with was not having none of that. So while the stepsisters were going to the, the reception, the birds pecked out their attacked them until yeah. they pecked out their eyes. And then that's the end of the story. <laughs> they that's pecked the, out the eyes of the stepsister? Yeah. Dang. That's and the all, original. And, wow. all the, and all the bodies <laughs> rotted happily ever after. Hey, yeah. we lit. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Uh, that was interesting. I like that bit about the the name Cinderella. I, I'll never hear it right again. Like Cinderella. Yeah. I'll never yeah. hear it without thinking about that now. Yeah. It's always crazy how the original stories are so much darker. Man. They uh what's the what's the name of that chick that writes those stories? The Lunar Chronicles? Ooh. Cassandra Pope. What's her name? Is that her name? No. It's something. something with Cassandra. Yeah. Um, they I guess she takes her she has her own angle on that, and I guess they're called the Lunar Chronicle or the Lunar Chronicles. Hmm. One hmm. of them's called Cinder, and it's like a twisted story of Cinderella. The other one's hmm. she does one for Rapunzel. Um I, yeah. the only reason I know this is because I've been to Books a Million like a million times in Barnes and Noble. Oh, Marissa Meyer. <laughs> Marissa Meyer. Sorry, Cassandra Poe. That she's some <laughs> she's someone different, Pope. but <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So that's that's cool. I want cool. I've been wanting to read those books just based on their premise, but yeah. It's yeah, cool. that's interesting. Dang. Cool. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Yeah. All you right. Know. I'm gonna go because I feel like David's gonna be way better than mine, and I don't want to follow him. Damn. So. Well, now now I'll be a disappointment. That's right. true. <laughs> yeah. So I I win either way. Dope. Works for me. <laughs> David has a smoother tip though. Hmm. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, Indeed. Indeed. Interesting. <laughs> um, okay, so this comes from uh, famed huh? Colombian. Thank you. Uh, famed <laughs> Colombian author uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who wrote uh, Cien Años de Soledad, which is 100 Years of Solitude. Um, and he, in an interview, talked about how, um, like, nightmares and like the occult are like his hobby like he likes thinking up like bizarre situations and stuff like that um just for fun and so he talks about that he has um he's developed like the perfect nightmare so i'm going to read you his translated description of uh of what he says the perfect nightmare is so mm. it's a dream that i am in a square room with smooth walls with no other communication with the outside world outside world than a small closed door. I open the door and when I leave the room, I find another exactly the same, four smooth smooth walls and a small closed door in front. Intrigued, I open that second door and find myself in a third room exactly the same as the previous one, and then a fourth and a fifth and a sixth. Does the gallery have no end? And so this is me talking now, like do you then just like, you got nothing to do, but go through the doors so how many 
how many doors would you guys open up before you gave up? Like, how far would you have to go before you're like, I'm fucked? Uh, I would start looking for traps and like, like trap doors and shit. Like, start feeling the walls. Mm. If they're all the same room, then it doesn't matter if you keep going. Might as well start feeling around. Yeah, good answer. I'd probably yeah. feel like. I mean, it's got to end sometime. So, I mean, I got nothing better to do than to just keep going through the doors. I mean, eventually you'll find an end. Yeah, that's kind of something I'd do, too. I just keep going and drive myself insane. Nice. Yeah. Probably. I think that's, <laughs> yeah. that's the situation. If it is, like, actually infinite, that you just, like, obviously you just eventually go insane and then starve to death. But Starve. Or, yeah. or die of thirst would be the first thing. But, um, Bang. We, would, we would definitely have to sing about him. Dude. Hey, shout out. God damn. Shout out. Let's uh, go. Yeah, Kendrick Lamar, if you want to come on the podcast, we'd love to have you, dude. We would definitely <laughs> love to have you. Also, drop the album, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> also, a great verse on the Busta Rhymes song. That's good. Yeah, no, they, they oh, fucking handled that. Dude. Yeah, they definitely handled it well. So, yeah, that's the... Well. <laughs> yeah, they did a well done on their steak. Yes, job well done. <laughs> it was not rare. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, it's the thought experiment known as the pace of the imperfecta, the perfect nightmare. Ah, uh-huh. huh? Uh-huh. That's cool. That's interesting. What would be the perfect nightmare to you? It would be just being like stabbed or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's too oh. basic. I remember talking about that my my personal hell. Like if I had to like like if you know heaven hell is real you know you go to one when you die if i if i go to hell right and it's hell's personalized it's like each person gets their most like specific torture it would literally just be me folding socks for all eternity <laughs> really <laughs> folding socks is awesome I socks would, are uh, easy I yeah it's super easy just because nah, i would, it would like it, it would drive me more and like just folding socks like doing that like menial task for like literally eternity would drive me more insane than like any physical pain could do damage to me well, what about what about looking, spending all eternity looking for the missing sock? You have one sock, but you oh can't. no, facts. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's brutal. That's more of like a like a tantalus thing, right? Like the the three great Alice, sinners, where like Alex coming in with the haymaker. Yeah, <laughs> the haymaker. Yeah, that's like the seventh circle or whatever. Dude, or the every time, every time I do laundry, I I pick Honestly. up my shit and I put it in my basket, and then I I walk to my my fucking room, and I always look behind me. Like to see if I, I drop the sock because I always do it. I'm yeah. just left there with another sock that I can't use. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I would be the fucking um, the washers at the freshman dorms in fucking Miami here um, would just eat socks. Like the lining was weird, so like if it slipped under, it would just get un- in there, and you like fucking couldn't find it. So what the fuck? So I lost it's like loose change. Yeah, I lost like maybe like eleven individual socks in my freshman year. Jeez. <laughs> the thing just fucking eats socks. I gained a t shirt though. I randomly <laughs> I randomly fucking like just did my laundry and was folding my laundry and everything was mine except for this one t shirt that just ended up in there somehow. Everything was and it mine. Wasn't, yeah. it, when it, it wasn't my roommates or anything. It's not like he threw it in my shit on accident. Like it, it just like like someone literally had to have left it in the dryer that I that was there and I just didn't see it. I don't know. Anyway. Did it fit you? Weird story. What? Yeah, I still wear it. I still have it. It's a oh, nice. it's a Miami baseball shirt. Interesting. Hmm. All right. Okay. David, FSU ambassador, give us your creepy story, baby. FSU ambassador. <laughs> All right, guys. This is just one I found. I read. I also haven't. Re- I didn't read the entire thing, but it seemed. I. That'd be, that'd be gross. I yeah. No, I hope not. <laughs> All right. This is posted by Saint Entropy on the r slash no sleep Reddit. This one's seen better. You, can you lean back a little bit from the mic? Oh, yeah. Of, there you go. Saint That's Entropy. Cool. Okay, okay. All right. It's called Grandma's Light is Always On. <clears throat> okay. Grandma's Kisses. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> In one corner of my grandma's living room stood a lamp that was almost never turned off. She would change the bulb every week like clockwork, waiting until the afternoon sunlight poured through the windows and filled the room. Even then she hurried, holding her breath until the deed was done and the lamp was back on. I would ask her about it once in a while. Each time she would smile softly, 
tousle yeah tussle my hair <laughs> and promptly change the subject i didn't learn the truth until i was 13 the first time i turned off the lamp i just wanted to see what would happen grandma screamed when she walked in, into the darkened living room a plate of cookies falling from her hand crashing to the floor i could hear her praying under her breath as she raced to turn the lights back on tears were shining in her eyes when she turned to me her lips pressed thin without warning she slapped me hard across the face Grandma had never so much as raised her voice before, and I was too shocked to cry. She cried enough for both of us, gathering me up in her arms and begging for my forgiveness. With her face buried in my shoulder, she finally told me about the lamp. It was a ghost light, she said. Ever since she and my grandpa had bought the house, back when they first arrived in America, the spirits of the dead had plagued her. Only when her burden threatened to drive her mad did she ask grandpa for help. She had expected him to laugh her out of the house, but he had surprised her by nodding gravely. It was he who had first lit the ghost light, and as long as that beacon burned through the darkness, she had never seen another spirit. I stopped visiting my grandma after that. It started gradually at first, missing a day here and there, but by the time I received news of her death, I hadn't seen her in over ten years. As her only living relative, I shouldn't have been surprised when I inherited her house. Yet as I sat in her lawyer's office, listening to him read her will, I was speechless. I had a difficult time paying attention after that, absorbed as I was with the business of remembering. So much love had filled those walls, so many happy memories, as I thought of my tiny, sterile apartment in the city. I quickly made my decision. I was almost overwhelmed by emotion as I walked through the front door. Everything looked exactly as I remembered it from my childhood. Houseplants still cluttered the windowsills, decorative bird plates still hung on the walls, and the ghost lights still burned in the living room. Seeing the old lamp sent a chill down my spine. I froze in my tracks, a smile fading from my lips, and I couldn't help but think of the night Grandma had slept me so many years ago. I had told my mother about the ghost light the next day, but she had dismissed it as a simple old superstition. It was the same way when she was growing up, she told me, and I shouldn't worry about it. Still, I couldn't shake the conviction that I had finally seen the true depths of my grandma's lunacy. I ran my fingers through the fringe on the lampshade as I thought, a bloom of sadness darkening my nostalgia. Sighing heavily, I turned the ghost light off with a decisive click. Something woke me later that night. I lay in bed, listening to the darkness until I heard a scratching coming from the living room. I'm good. Rats were the last thing I wanted to deal with at the moment, and I rolled over with a groan, determined to ignore it until the morning. The scratching continued intermittently, constantly jerking me from the edge of sleep, <laughs> and I finally had had enough. I threw the blankets off me and stormed out into the hall. Moonlight flooded the front of the house, and I didn't bother turning on lights as I made my way to the living room. I knew every inch of the house, even after so many years, and as I moved confidently through the dim light, I was furious at having been woken from a dead sleep, and my anger ill-prepared me for what I found. An elderly woman was crouched in the corner, her gaunt back to me. She was scratching at the floor where the walls met, stopping every few minutes to cock her head. A gnarl of dread unfurled in the pit of my stomach. I had no idea how this woman had gotten into my house, and I thought it was obvious she needed help. It took me some time to summon the courage to approach her. My hand shook as I reached out to gently squeeze her shoulder. I meant to ask her where she lived, who her caretaker was, but the words were driven from my mind when I turned and I saw her face. When she turned, sorry. Her eyes were solid black, bottomless pits that didn't reflect the moonlight. Her jaw hung impossibly open, unhinged, and the dark tunnel of her mouth spiraled down into her throat. I had a moment to realize who she was, to recognize the familiar map of wrinkles in her face, the curls of her wispy hair, and then my grandma screamed. I shrieked, stumbling backwards away from the nightmare in the corner. My arms flailed in the air, reaching for the nearest lamp, and my hands touched the ghost light. I yanked the chain, filling the room with light, and she was gone. I never turned off the ghost light after that. After letting the bulb burn out one evening, I began chanting, uh, changing it every week, just as Grandma had. Eventually, I got married, and luckily for me, my wife was tolerant of my strange fixation on the lamp. The light continued to burn, and I lived my life happily enough. But my grandson has been asking about the ghost light lately. Each time he asks, I smile softly, tussle his hair, and promptly change the subject. For some reason, I can't bring myself to tell him the truth. I think about how I pulled away from my grandma, how I thought her crazy and I keep my mouth shut. I worry, though. I know I won't be around forever, just so I know he will eventually the ghost light. I worry that he might see me then, twisted and wrong, scratching in the corner. And that's it. Wow. Dang. 
I was right to go before you. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of long. I was worried about that, but no, wow. you did a, you did a great job reading. That was dope. Yeah. The, the way like... you said sterile was amazing. Sterile. <laughs> sterile. <laughs> I like the saying it's a fancy way. The the story does a really good job of um, reviewing without warning. Because it, they just say, like, without warning, I, sl- I got slapped across the face. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, man, those beats are banging. Bro. Like, literally, literally, I thought Trevor's holding in a reference right now. Like, I, <laughs> oh I, he said without warning, and I was like, Trevor's, like, dying to, like, ma- just say no, some so dumb fact. shit. Oh you know, the best God. part about that is that without warning came out on Halloween. Yeah, yeah, 2017. yeah. So it just Jesus. ties, it's full circle, like, what the fuck karma That's is. Funny. But when you when you came out, were you expecting it or was it just without warning? It dropped hey. without warning. It did, yeah. There it was did, no yeah, like it... <gasps> yeah. oh. get it. But my favorite part of that story was when David giggled when he read the line um jerking me from the edge of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was a he was a four year old right there for sure. It was so good. I was gonna I was gonna make a comment on it, but I just kept you're like jerking me and then you like giggled a little bit and then you just kept going. <laughs> Haven't we talked about that before? How like jerks from the edge of sleep is such a weird thing. I don't know. Maybe not. I, I don't hear that nearly enough to like think that it's weird. So I don't. I don't know. It's just funny. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Jerked from my. I mean, I I found it to be like a, a like the double entendre landed in my head like immediately. So. Yeah. There you go. That's yeah. You're not you're not the only one. All right. So you I I guess I will go. I'm uh. Ahead, I have no I, I have no idea who wrote this uh, story. I just found it online, but it, it's uh, us. it's pretty fucking great. So. All right. Yeah, no, it's it's only it's three pages, so it'll be a little yeah. bit of a read. But all right, all right. But it's settling. Worth, it's worth cool. It, so. All right, y'all got your popcorn and your and your spooky lights. My, and my imaginary snack. popcorn. Yeah. Your snacky snack. Okay. All right. This one's called The Artist. There is nothing more promising than a blank canvas. It's a new beginning, void of imperfections and mistakes. It was the only thing that made me feel free to be my authentic self without the judgment of others. The canvas stood proudly on the easel. Is it easel? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Just making sure. Daring me to swipe a paintbrush across it. No. I took a step back from the canvas and inspected it. I could visualize the piece already, and if all goes according to plan, it would be my greatest work yet. Sunlight beamed through the large windows, filling the studio with a warm glow that contrasted its cold interior. High metal beams supported the ceiling and the brick walls that gave the studio an industrial look were lined with my older paintings. I'd admit, I was never a fan of living in big cities. The bustling streets and flashing lights tend to trigger my migraines, and it was generally a, a sensory overload. That's why I kept to myself in a studio, a safe haven from the chaotic world on the other side of these walls. It was a place of peace where no living soul besides my own could bother me. I walked over to the closet where I kept my art supplies, my footsteps echoing against the the smooth concrete floor. The moment I pulled the doors open, a wonderful array of smells filled the air at the sight of the different colors. I've had synesthesia for as long as I've had migraines. It was a blessing and a curse all wrapped up in one. My senses were intertwined with each other to the point where seeing sounds and smelling colors were a part of my daily life. I discovered my love for painting after developing synesthesia, each color with a fragrant smell that came together in harmony with every painting I made. I wouldn't give that up for the world, but the migraines that came with it were agony. I knew an attack was coming when I'd start seeing an aura of colors in my vision. Then I was blinded by pain, quite literally. I grabbed a palette, a palette knife, a handful of brushes varying in size, and the tubes of the basic colors I needed. I placed them on the wooden table next to the easel and went back to the cabinet to pick up the most important item. At the very bottom below the last shelf was a gallon of red paint. It wasn't just regular old paint that you would buy at the craft store. No, it was something special. It was a mixture I created to to make the perfect red. The fragrance overpowered all of the others in the best way possible. It was my pride and joy. The deep scarlet shade smelled unlike anything I had ever smelled before. It was sweet, but not too sweet. It had floral undertones and a slight spice to it, all while having a fresh, clean scent. A strange concoction, but perfect nonetheless. I paced, I placed the gallon next to the easel and opened it. I grabbed a wooden rod and you, hey, yo, and used it to mix the, the <laughs> thick paint. Jeez, <laughs> God. And, and used it to mix the thick paint. You were doing the so rich. well. <laughs> you were doing so well, bro. I was. 
Oh, I, I, I have to. <laughs> and I grabbed a wooden rod and used it to mix the thick paint. The rich red color swirled in the white bucket until it reached its true shade. Before I could begin, I quickly ran over to my record player, gifted to me by my late grandmother before I moved to California. I placed my favorite record and lowered the needle. The soft music played and the room suddenly erupted with colors. My heart filled up with the joy at the sight and smell of it all. Now it was time to paint. I dipped the largest brush I had and quickly moved my hand across the canvas, leaving behind a red streak that resembled a rose against freshly fallen snow. After a thin layer was applied, I mixed the runny paint with a medium in order for it to thicken. A special medium had to be created to thicken the red paint since regular oil paint mediums could not get the job done. I scooped up a glob of the thickened paint and spread it across the canvas using a palette knife. The colors that emerged from the music practically painting for me. On the other side of the room, a faint cry came from the bathroom. Following the sound, an aura began appearing in my vision, signaling an incoming attack. No, 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 not now, damn it. I murdered under my breath. I muttered. <laughs> murdered. <laughs> I walked over to my record player and raised the volume in, a, in, a, in an attempt to drown out the cry. To my dismay, the voice became louder, turning into a full-fledged scream. My vision went white. The migraine felt as if someone was hammering an ice pick into my brain, each wave being the pick hammered deeper and deeper into my head. In a desperate attempt to stop the migraine, I stumbled in the direction of the bathroom, following the sound of the scream. The closer I got to it, the stronger the migraine pulsed. I crashed into the door and slid onto the floor. I, cra <laughs> <laughs> I crashed into the door and slid onto the floor in front of it. I was so sure that she wouldn't wake up, but it seemed like I was wrong. I made a mental note to use a stronger drug next time to avoid another mishap. Honey, I need you to stop that racket. I'm working on something and you're giving me a bit of a headache. Through the door, a woman's voice answered softly. Please open the door, the woman said, her voice shaking. My vision began to clear up along with the migraine. Now why would I do that? I asked calmly, closing my eyes and pinching the bridge of my nose. Please let me out, the woman begged. I, I think they're all dead. I shook my head, not surprised by the news. I know that, dear. That tends to happen when I'm making more red paint. The woman began to whimper. What are you doing to me? My irritation grew at the sound of her shrill voice. It was bad enough that she had interrupted a sacred moment of creation and triggered a migraine, but now she wouldn't shut up. Please stop asking such silly questions. You'll be joining the rest of your friends in a few minutes once you're completely drained, I explained, trying to sound, trying hard to sound as level-headed as possible. Her voice became faint and slurred. They'll be here any minute, you sick bastard. I bet my family called the police when they noticed I was missing. I narrowed my eyes, debating on whether or not I should believe her call or her believe her bluff. How the hell would her parents know where she was? The realization dawned on me. I couldn't find her phone, but she was wearing a watch. A watch. Shit, the watch. She was wearing a fucking smart watch. I quickly stood up and stumbled over to my painting in a frenzy. The, wor the world looked like it was spinning and my stomach turned. Being caught by the police was one thing, but I'd be damned if I couldn't finish my final masterpiece. In the distance, the sound of si sirens wailed approaching the building. I slapped the colors onto the canvas wildly, creating erratic strokes I couldn't dream of making in any other state. The more I painted, the more I saw how my vision had evolved into something greater, something truly spectacular. The desperation and panic in my mind translated beautifully onto the canvas. I mixed the other colors with the red paint on my palette, something I had never dared to do in fear of tainting the perfection and purity of the red. The new scents that emerged from the combination were intoxicating, giving me a high I had never experienced before. I took a step back from the finished painting. My eyes became foggy with tears, and I could feel my shoulders relax and my heartbeat slow. The red paint down the red paint ran down on the canvas and dripped onto the floor, creating a small puddle underneath. While I admired my work in awe, I failed to notice the police barging into my studio until I was tackled onto the floor. One of them broke into the locked bathroom and vomited, presumably at the sight of the pile of dried up bodies that I had collected. The smell of rot flooded the room, overwhelming the pleasant aroma of the colors. The tanks filled with red paint were stacked neatly in the corner by the sink, and the tubes connecting them to the corpses dripped paint onto the tanks like an IV. The officer on my back recited my rights, gagging every now and then at the sight of my paintings. I smiled, tears rolling down my cheeks. I had done it. My masterpiece was complete. That's some sick shit, my guy. <laughs> you I want to know what the paintings look like. Dang. I yeah, um, I wanted to know what it looked like yeah. as well. 
I'm kind of like, but <laughs> I, was, that, I, like, I think that's, I? that's part of the beauty of it. It's kind of up to your imagination. Yeah. Dang. Huh. So uh, that was a that's... story by my beautiful girlfriend. Okay. Oh, I, what? I wanted to, I wanted to say it before <laughs> you did. Cause I, I, I fucking knew it. Cause like you're adorable, Rocio. Like you fucking oh, okay. like you were whispering with him. You're like, I, I want you to go last. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. And then you like, like when yeah, he started, away. when he I started know. telling it, you got like all balled up with your blanket, and it's like covering <laughs> half your face. I was like, she's like mad nervous for no reason right now. She had not this reaction to any of the other stories. This is definitely hers. And I know you're yeah. you're like you're like art um inclined, right? So you would yeah. know how you would know how to write. She's about a that creative. Kind of, you would know how to write about that kind of stuff. So, wow. yeah. it was for. Um, I took an intro to creative writing in my fall semester, and uh, I had to write a little short story and thought it'd be fun to do like a little, a little gross, spooky one. So yeah. Dang. So, yeah, it was she's, good. Getting, she's trying. She's trying to get her man or a minor in creative writing. So yeah, I'm definitely spooked. That's cool. <laughs> a little disturbed, I I could see. I was I just like, watching you the whole time. I was like, "Hee hee, looks so gross." <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Like, so uh, if you wrote it, what did the painting look like? In your in know. your mind, in your mind. What um, you in my mind, honestly, it was just like some weird abstract shit, because uh, the person painting is a little cuckoo, as you could probably tell. A little. So they probably little, saw yeah. something different from what we'd see, anyway. So. So like. Mm. The, the, the disturbed factor is that it's the the material used to make the painting. I, I would it's assume. blood. Yeah. Yeah. Dang, that's dope. And it's cool because she doesn't say blood in the story. Yeah. yeah even when right. you even when it's revealed that it's blood, she still says red paint. Yeah. Yeah. That's all like from his perspective yeah. or yeah. the, the unreliable narrator. Yeah. That's cool. Dang. Man, I like the story. I begged her for me to write or for me to read this story. For yeah, because we were we were looking for scary stories. He just looks up to me and like, "Can I read your story?" And I'm like, "No, don't you dare!" But, Dang. I I literally yeah. I reread it and then I said I told her straight up I'm like I can see Cameron coming about this like right now like <laughs> we ha I have to read this. Yeah, Let me it's read dope. This. I fucking love like the true crime shit. Yeah, I love I love realistic. Um, why well, don't. I don't love it. I, I I very much prefer like realistic horror and like mm -hmm. stuff like people being fucked up as opposed to it just being like monsters or ghosts. Yeah. I 100% yeah. agree. I feel like that's way scarier than like a ghost story, like people being yeah. fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's that's like, like it reminds oh, it's much yeah. more real. Like it's, especially it's like, it can happen. Yeah, especially like sociopathy and stuff where like people are very, very able to be one person when you're looking at them and then also go and murder a bunch of people and paint with their blood. Yeah, that's like it reminded me of this book uh, from the corner of his eye, I think it's called um, by Dean Koontz. But uh, mm. it's like a bit. We always make fun of him every time we go into yeah. Barnes and Noble because he's everywhere. <laughs> I know. Him I know. and James Patterson. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's so many. Like, I don't know how many of them of his books are good, but a few of them definitely are. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, from his. It's part of like a huge part of the book is from the perspective of like a psychopath and like his like. And he really he writes his like perception of the world really well and like how little he values. <laughs> All right, <laughs> <laughs> values how little he values human life and stuff, and it's very dark like that. Yeah. I think the original Dang. voice crack was so high pitched that it didn't actually even come through Discord. Oh, I that's heard funny. It. No, I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking <laughs> sure. No, we're I'm definitely not making you feel better. You. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dang. Yeah. When funny. it happens. Oh, yeah. Yay! Yay, Rocio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. There is a talented person among us. Hey. Oh, there's only no, one. don't say that. We have to find it. Yeah, we got music <laughs> we creators here. We have to find the yeah. We do have music creators here, yeah. Yeah, and podcast Dang. starters. Yeah, yeah, we're we're artists. True. Yeah, we're in our own right. <laughs> we freestyle yeah. bullshit for two hours every week. That takes talent. I could not. <laughs> no, it's it's definitely a different art form, for sure, than most others. It's this whole thing, yeah. It's hmm. radio, basically. So yeah. 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 All right. Uh, do we have anything else that we'd like to cover for this Halloween episode? I wanted to talk about like baby, baby us Halloween stories. You know, growing up, yeah. reading costumes, parties, 
Anything you got in that? What's vein? how many? Anything how many times did y'all? How many times did y'all dress up as a ninja? Never. Like zero. No. What? Oh my god. Maybe I one. was Spider Man probably five times though. I'll tell wow. you that much. Yeah, I was yeah. always a black ninja, like a, a just straight black costume ninja. Dang. Always, just every time. That and Spider Man. That's those, very. Those two. That's insanely on brand for you. Good job. I was yeah. probably, good job. I was probably good job Harry being Potter able to sell yourself to people. Dang. Dang. Harry Potter would have been dank. I was Harry we Potter went a to, few times. We yeah. went to uh, Spear Halloween, and we were in the Halloween or the Halloween section. Wow. <laughs> we were in the Harry Potter section. I couldn't find a fucking Hufflepuff robe at oh. all. They were all Gryffindor uh -huh. and Slytherin. Are you yeah, Hufflepuff? Y'all. I'm Hufflepuff, yeah. You did the test? Huh. Yeah. Wow. And and my values align with Hufflepuff. That makes sense. Hard working little uh was it a badger? That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. What, Very are? friendly. What? What is David? David, do you know? I think I'm a Gryffindor. What about you? Yeah, think... David would be Gryffindor. I'm Ravenclaw. <laughs> what about you, Rocio? Oh. <laughs> She's a Slytherin. Yeah. I'm Slytherin. a Slytherin. Wow, yeah, we got all the. Like, I think we talked about uh, this. Did we? Damn. Dude, Trevor has some mad hate towards Slytherin, Dude, Slytherin and I don't is, appreciate it at all. It's literally like the, the house of evil. No, it's not. It's yes, not. it is. It's just a bad name. I don't it know how you read the books name. and you don't know. It, it gets a bad name. It gets a bad name. <laughs> all the bad guys come from Slytherin. Literally. Yeah. Like, I don't know how y'all don't understand okay, this. Okay, Even but Jake they get kicked out at the end of the fucking name. book. Like, they're like, but the hey, motivation... yo, House of Slytherin, please leave the Great Hall. <laughs> and where does where does Peter Pettigrew belong? Where does he belong? In Gryffindor? In Gryffindor? Is that, is that what you're trying to say? Uh, yeah. yeah. Who and cares? He's like, That's one guy. That's one blunder. He's like the worst character in Harry Potter, like, period, with Umbridge. <laughs> No, That's Umbridge it. is Umbridge is not even. It, he's not even close. To Umbridge. I fucking hate Peter Pettigrew, dude. Um, I can deal with him because he killed himself. Yeah. Did he? He didn't kill That's himself nice. in the movies. Yeah, he kind of disappeared. <laughs> yeah, it, like I told yeah. y'all when we were talking about it last week that he like he strangles himself with like a metal arm because you know Voldemort cut his arm off. Oh yeah. And oh shit. And so he has in the books. He kills himself in the book. Yeah, like yeah, he, okay. he, he has just... a moment of weakness where he's like. Hey, oh, you're really gonna kill me right here? Because Harry saved his life back in the third book. Yeah, and so he like he thinks about it, and he's like, "Yeah, I probably shouldn't be killing him." And then like, I don't know if Voldemort takes control of his mind or whatever, like subconsciously, but he just like turns and just like starts strangling himself and dies. Oh so, wow! Yeah, he does just disappear in the movies. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, he just like he like he walks away. <laughs> yeah, he just doesn't do anything. <laughs> they just left yeah. him out, and everyone was like, "Yeah, I didn't miss him." So. <laughs> Um, yeah. well okay yeah so anyway what is what are people's do we i don't know if i even i was thinking about where i rank halloween in my holidays because of the yeah, different experiences i had it's kind of low like, for me but yeah it's, yeah it's a, it's a their thing it's it's cause, like once once you can't go trick-or-treating in your neighborhood it's kind of like why yeah. it's whack as fuck yeah. yeah, I only trick or treated through like twelve or thirteen, maybe at yeah. the latest. 13. I think I pulled. I think I finessed fourteen, and then that was it. <laughs> yeah, and I it was have, like I might have finessed fifteen. Okay, okay. And, and, and then really, by that time, I went last year. <laughs> <laughs> Literally <laughs> last year. And then, and then by that time, because there's like, no rule. I can. Yeah. Actually, yeah, years. but that's corny. No, I think there's a place. Um. You went. By like, huh? What? You went trick or treating last year. Yeah, yeah, don't don't be twenty and walk like, up to my door asking me for candy. I Go was, fucking buy it. <laughs> I was nineteen. Okay. Okay. What's okay. Same, same and difference. also I had pretty cool sick makeup and I pretty saw cool. other adults walking around. Were so you why can't by I yourself? It? Were they with kids? No. <laughs> were you, well maybe some were of you them. By your, <laughs> were you yeah, by yeah, yourself? Other adults around so I can get candy. What, well. what was the group? <laughs> First off, I'm sixteen passing, so I think I can get away with it. Also, sixteen pat. I can pass as being. Oh, 16. okay, that's what you're saying. Okay, um, <laughs> that's a weird phrase. <laughs> I'm sixteen passing, by the way. It's like you're telling me your SAT that score. Or something Is that like, that? like a? Yeah. That's like actually a phrase <laughs> that people use. No, but there's passing. actual locations where they have like adult trick or treating. So, um, that you bring your kids, or if you have any, and they do like the trick or treating. But then when you come up to the house, they, uh, they just give you like food or like alcohol all that stuff and it's just like a nice time does everyone buy yeah. it dude i would go to yeah, fucking taco bell i would go to taco bell and get all those spicy hot packets 
and I see anyone with a mustache or any kind of facial hair, you're getting hey. some fucking hot sauce. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> oh, you gotta hit on the mustache. Fuck on my property. <laughs> maybe, maybe yeah. like next year or something, we should plan for like a Halloween I'd be, party. Did you just say you a were gonna? If, budget if what you're saying is true, that'd be dope. It is feeders. true. If what you're yeah. saying is true, <laughs> yeah, if you all doubted me. Yeah, that would be cool. I feel like if if just some dude, especially like I come around, like I have a mustache and I just walk yeah, up, like no, I hey, I'm by you. myself. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. a little weird. I'm not gonna lie, I, can't I don't do have it. a mustache. Luckily, it's so almost I'm like at this good. point. Yeah. At this point, I feel like I could be creative enough to actually have like a solid costume, but I need somewhere to go with it, you know? Right, dude, yeah. Like, yeah, dude. Those costumes at Spirit Halloween where you can like it's like a jumpsuit and you like um, like. It'll give you like little legs, and then yeah. like you have a bear that's holding you, dude. It's mm. so cute, dude. There was yeah. one where you're Mario and you're riding Yoshi. Yeah, yeah, cool uh, as fuck. Uh, they're yeah, like yeah. sixty bucks, but they're so worth it. I saw a couple at the pub crawl I went to last year. Damn, they, they always get the most attention because they're just like big as Damn. fuck. Yeah, a Halloween pub crawl is cool too. I like the thing is I've almost never been to Halloween parties except as a kid. Never. Like I would just I would be left out and be like, well. I think I even in in college I was like I I like tweeted about it I was like well I'm standing and eating a sandwich tonight yeah. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a good Halloween that's like, why I, I wanted just, you to come over tomorrow just like to chill and like do something yeah. on Halloween because I've never really done anything so yeah, yeah Miami is kind of brutal for that because it's either you're a girl and you go to the frats or you're rich and you go to the bars that have like ridiculous fucking <laughs> events um, mm. and I'm neither of those so. And also not in a frat, so you know. Join a frat? <laughs> no. Join a frat. Bro, the dudes. The dudes this is Ada like, Williams telling you to join a frat. The dudes uh, are like just for Halloween. The dudes are like a grand or above for each Yikes. year. Would have added like over four thousand dollars to my college bill. Every year. Every year. It's, 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 a grand, it's over. Kid. It's over a grand a year. Yeah, frat dudes. Yeah. Yickety yikers. For rent yeah. and beer and whatever. Dang. That's funny. Well, she ain't catching me giving them a grand to be yeah. in a frat. I just but drink anyway, alone. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, don't 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 hit the nail on the head too hard there, bud. No. <laughs> <laughs> that hurt. Um, so I was talking about me, idiot. I know. I'm. Ta- I'm just that. Never mind. <laughs> Fucking Christ. Um, so have you guys ever done any form of Halloween pranks or anything like that, or even outside of? Halloween. So I'm talking specifically um, this is like leading up to Halloween or around the time um, TPing and ding dong ditching. No. No. I, I believe we... in karma way too much to do any of that shit unfortunately. No? Not even when I you did were ding dong ditching. Kid, no. You did? When I was a, a, like a little kid um, <laughs> some people I knew I guess I shouldn't say. <laughs> it doesn't matter now. Yeah but... just bleep, bleep the names out. <laughs> Well, it was it's my sister and her kitchen. friends were a bad even... influence on me as a kid, and they were like teenagers, and I was like, uh, I don't know, like four or something, and they would take oh me God. along ding dong ditching. Oh my and they, God. Like, they just did it a little bit. It was also in our neighborhood, which is like the worst idea ever. <laughs> like on your street, like yeah. you caught. I mean, yeah, I remember we were like jumping in the bushes at night, and I was like terrified. We hid in the grass one time because one of our neighbors had this super long grass. Um. But, super long wait y'all hid in the grass you said yeah yeah yeah. It's like you just did like grass. all gillied up like laid in the grass <laughs> yeah one, one of our uh neighbors yeah it's super long that was kind of dope yeah but well nowadays everybody and their mother has has like a ring door ring or... yeah 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 fuck the game up. Up getting arrested like an hour later yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know this is mike myers <laughs> okay, bro. Trevor was I keep, I keep thinking about, about that, that baby driver clue. last night, which I have to bring that up. Don't let me forget about that. Once we're once what? we're between topics, your moment on on fucking modern warfare last night. My moment. Uh, I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. But we'll get go ahead. To it. Just no, we'll give get it to me it. now. We'll because I want to, I want to make a whole thing out about it. So we're gonna anyway. Okay. So, all right. Um, God. But yeah, no. I used to um, go ding dong ditching all the time. Um, there was a like down the street from my neighborhood. Essentially, is another neighborhood that's just like one big circle. So it's got it's a circle, right? So it goes one entry, one exit, and uh, and there's houses on the outer rim and houses on the inner rim. 
and there's like a small like forest area in the center of the inner rim and so um we would like you would ding dong ditches ditch houses on the outside and then run across the street to the inner rim and like hide in the trees and shit like behind other people's houses so Mm -hmm. i probably Mm -hmm. trespassed on like 25 different properties in the in the course of like an hour but it was dope. Nice. You do it. Um, you do it with friends, or yeah, always. No, I never did it by myself. I, yeah, yeah, that's that'd like be, that'd be so sick. Like, like, ha, 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 ha. like I got him. Yeah, high five, <laughs> now, buddy. And like <laughs> got him. Like, cause the best the yeah. best part was getting people's reactions when you were like a shithead little kid, and you were like, haha, old man is angry that I'm ringing his doorbell <laughs> and running away. And uh, <laughs> you would try to do it like a certain amount of times in a row without getting caught. So you would give it like mm-hmm. two minutes and then just go back and ring the doorbell again and then fucking book it. Um, That's fucked up. The, the, <laughs> there was like, we would like rate the houses on difficulty too. Cause some had like super short front <laughs> wow. lawns and had like a really nearby hiding spot. And others like you had to run across like a fucking huge ass front lawn or something like that. in like um, 15 seconds or whatever. So it was, it was dope. Um, you ever get you never caught? Know. Um, yeah, a few times. Never, never like, <laughs> never like caught and like they got me by like the reprimanded. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> yelled at, like, like, like seen and yelled at. Like you, you, you crazy kids. Like uh, yeah. um, they're just Clint Eastwood. And then we got the cops called on us one time, and it was the fucking oh, best wow. because it was it was um, me and a friend of mine and my brother and a friend of his, and my brother's like two and a half years older than me. Um, and so this friend was like a friend that he had made it at our school. And I talked about the school being super small, uh, last episode. And so this kid like didn't get out a lot. Like his parents were teachers at the school. So he's like super strict parentage and everything. So it was the, the exact like stereotypical, you know, you let this kid have a little bit of freedom and he just goes fucking nuts. Like people who drink themselves to death on their first night of college or whatever. Um, mm. but this is like the 14 year old version of that. So we go ding dong ditching once it gets dark and we hit a couple houses and we're like, haha, whatever. And so we go up to this other one that we've never done before. And this like angry ass old man lived there, which we didn't know at the time, but we ring his doorbell and we start to run away. Cause the, the thing is like everyone goes up to ring the doorbell. So it's like the same amount of risk for everyone getting caught. Um, mm-hmm. And we ring the doorbell and we run away and I'm like halfway across the street and I'm like, where the frick is Nick? And I look back, and this kid is pissing on the guy's front lawn. Oh, my like, God. Like, literally has taken his dick out and is, like, pissing in his bushes, like, 10 feet away from the front door. I was like, what are you doing? Yeah, no. And he was like, no, not, he was like ah, and the fucking guy comes out of his house, and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? And, like, and, and we're, we're all like, Nick, get the fuck out of there. And we all, like, we all book it. And so he calls the cops. And we spend, like, the next, like, 15 to 20 minutes, because this was the neighborhood that's, like, up above mine. My my whole area is, like, a collection of, like, um, different, like, mini suburban neighborhoods, basically. And so it was, like, the, we spent the next 10 to 15 minutes, or 15 to 20 minutes, like, going through people's backyards, because the cop car got there, like, fast for some reason. Like, he had nothing better to do, or he was, like, in the area. So he got there in, like, three, four minutes. And we're seeing it, like, roll down the street, and we're like, obviously, like, he he got a call by Ding Dong Ditching. We're the only motherfuckers out here. If he sees us, he knows it's us. So we ha- we were, like, running through backyards. Like, automatic lights are coming on. We're, like, like pissing ourselves. We're just fucking run- <laughs> taking all the shortcuts we know through the woods and, like, all this stuff to get back to home base. So, yeah. Gee. Um, The only notable TPing story I have is that... Um, we got TP'd, but we don't have, like, a big tree in our front yard, so they didn't get us that bad. So they mostly just threw it all over the bushes. Um, and so we knew who did it, so we took all the toilet paper, brought it to their house, and then threw it up in their fucking trees. And they have way bigger <laughs> trees, so it was a way bigger pain in the ass for them. Um, and then I remember another time that the same people, they, we were friends with them, so it was, like, you know, good-mannered, whatever. Um, mm. But they got TP'd a different Halloween by a completely, by whoever, and it rained that day that night or whatever Mm. so the toilet paper goes up it rains it gets soggy it sticks to all the branches you have to pull it off like square by square and these people use like fucking like five rolls of toilet paper so we're like up in these trees like i was helping them out peeling off like toilet paper from the branches trying to clean it up so yeah yeah that's the worst 
God. If there's rain God in the dang. forecast and you like the person you're TPing, don't don't do it. Yeah, PSA. Man. Oof. So yeah, you were a freaking you were an unruly little uh scamp yeah. as a kid, huh? Yeah, yeah. basically yeah, it's so. suburbia. Sure it's fun. Guessed. It's fun shit. I had a couple kids in my neighborhood that were like my age, which was lucky. I know people yeah. some people who like literally um my best friend from middle school, Bryce was like yeah there's like no kids in my neighborhood it's literally all people like 60 or above just (laughs) so but yeah now toilet paper is like a freaking commodity you can't be doing that (laughs) yeah i think it's mostly back in stores i haven't seen it sold out in a while disinfectant wipes i haven't seen in fucking forever though for real it took me forever to find bleach yeah same thing (laughs) it's on crunchyroll hey wow and And netflix it'll take you forever to watch it you'll be dead (laughs) <laughs> that is it's true. Not even, it's not even that bad. It's it's shorter than Shippuden. You gotta skip the fillers, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. So I don't know <laughs> not if you true. Guys, if you guys have one piece other, would like your information. Any other Halloween oh, yeah. stories you want to tell or relate? Well, I don't really have a Halloween story per se, but I got like a creepy thing that happened to me. Okay. So, um, so you guys know like what sleep paralysis is and like how it works? Yes, it's fucking yeah. terrifying. I hope okay. I, I hope have you guys had that me. happen before? No. Uh, no? Scared Jesus of it. Christ. <laughs> okay, well. I've never had it. Um, fun fact. Fun fact. Um, um, there is like like something like 12% of people in Nova Scotia experience sleep paralysis. It's like 10% higher there than it is like literally everywhere else in the world. Super random That's fun good. fact for you. Wow. Where is that? Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. It's um an island in the north. Yeah, it's Canada. It's the eastern coast of Canada. Oh wow. It's haunted by demons there. Oh. Ah! <laughs> that's the um, name. That's going to the intro for fact sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I especially in high school, I experienced it a lot and I kinda attribute it to stress. Um so like every other night I would experience sleep paralysis. It is Jesus. let me just say the worst feeling ever. Um yeah, the way that I would get it, huh? Sorry, I was gonna say that definitely doesn't help your stress levels is like that's yeah, that's, exactly. that's a that's a horrendous vicious cycle where you're like where you're stressed out about your life and then you go you're like this is the, supposed to be the one easy thing, like going to sleep and just fucking sleeping and you're you go to bed every night knowing like you're gonna have a terrifying experience. That sounds awful. Mm. yeah 100 that's, that's exactly stressful. how it was and um for me it was like as i was falling asleep that's when it would hit and i could feel it coming like it feels mm. like my body like is almost like shutting down but my mind is still awake and i would just feel like so heavy like there's a pressure like there's a weight on like my finger and i couldn't lift it anymore um mm. and would you be laying like flat happens. on would you be laying like flat on your back or on your side or like what? Usually it would happen when I'm laying like flat on my back. And so experts tell you that you should sleep on your side to like try to mitigate that feeling, but sometimes it would hit while I'm sleeping, like however. Yeah. Okay. Um sorry, just and usually it comes with hallucinations. And it could be either visual or auditory. And um, one time it was like, I had like a auditory one and it was insanely realistic. And I remember laying in bed and I told you this actually. So you, you've heard the story behind the scenes. Yeah. So I was laying in bed. It was probably like one or two in the morning and I just hear like a cabinet in the kitchen open and then like rustling of a bag. And so my first thought is that my mom is probably up, like opening a bag of chips or something, and she's eating. And turns out it was David. (laughs) (laughs) David, what are you doing? You hear the crunch. You see the crunch. (laughs) Cabin crunch. Did you see an FSU hat just sitting anywhere? Daddy David. (laughs) Honestly, though, it was like that sound that we were hearing as you were munching on those chips. um, (laughs) That's what I was hearing. And like a bag rustling, like a hand is going into a bag and like eating it. And I'm going to take this chip. And eat it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that call that. Shout out oh Light Yagami. <laughs> Dude. Death Note King. Gang, where you at? <laughs> so um I hear it in the kitchen first, and I hear it coming closer and like footsteps. 
And so I thought my mom is probably going to check on me to see if I'm asleep or not. And the moment where the footsteps should have stopped and opened the door, it phased right through it. And I just oh. hear it come into my room. Mm. And I was like, oh, fuck, dude. Like, no, 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 no. This no, is no, messed no. up. And <sighs> mind you, it's sleep paralysis. So at that point, like, I was feeling, like, horrible and I couldn't move at all. Mm -hmm. I couldn't move my head. I could open my eyes if I wanted to, but I did not want to because <laughs> I knew that I could probably see something terrifying. She sleeps under the covers. Oh, yeah. That's the thing now. I sleep under mm. the covers like my head. Cause I don't want to see anything anymore. <laughs> um, Makes sense. Mm. And I just hear the whatever, the hallucination, just walking right past me and then right over my head. Like there's like a a space between the wall and like the head area where uh, the bed. Are you hearing like <laughs> you know where my head would be laying? And I mm -hmm. just hear it like uh, the bag over my head just like eating there for Fucking god dude. knows how long it's Jesus. david and i scream <laughs> so loud when i see him <laughs> daddy david what are you doing <laughs> and then uh, i don't know i guess it just like stopped at one point and i'm just terrified as hell because at that point i can move again and i was like do i want to check if there's someone behind me right now like do i open my eyes and mm. then after a couple of minutes, I was like, okay, I think it's safe. I think it's just a hallucination. I'm good. And thank God David wasn't there behind me. Yeah. <laughs> thank God. Yeah. David and I would have had to have a talk. <laughs> that's for but, sure. Yeah, no, that's in moments like that was probably my uh the worst one that I've ever had. Most wow. times I never really had a hallucination. It was just like it would just set in and I'm like, okay, cool. I'm just not gonna move for the next like 30 minutes or something like Dang. it's not a pleasant feeling that's are you because i think soup like sleep paralysis is like when, when you when you go to sleep normally there's like different stages of sleep so like there's like a certain stage where your body like your brain messages like your muscles to like not move mm -hmm. so that i mean it's like a primitive response to like that we wouldn't roll over and like kill ourselves in our sleep so everybody kind of goes through like some sort of muscle stiffness while they're sleeping so they, they don't move around when they're deep sleep but like sleep paralysis is like a dysfunction of that process so like your brain is is active but your whole body is like still in the sleep response which is kind of crazy to think about yeah it's a weird separation Man. that like shouldn't be able to happen but it does yeah right doc yeah. ock coming at you um, dude if they don't call you doc ock i swear to god <laughs> who oh yeah for sure <laughs> Yeah, that's terrifying, though. Um, oh, when, when you're in the sleep paralysis state, are you, like, do, since it happened, like, so often, um, were you able to be, like, okay, this is sleep paralysis, I'll be fine, or is the anxiety, like, way too high to even be able to have that thought? Uh, usually, it's, it's fine, because I know that it's going to pass, but, dude, like, so you're just like, the oh, fuck of this it, again, but it just sucks. Yeah, 100%. And like, I feel it starting at my fingers. Mm -hmm. and I that's, feel it coming. Oh my gosh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel it like coming through my fingers first, which is a weird like sensation of just like heaviness I'm on sure, my fingers. Yeah. Like if I were try to try like lift my hand and like uh, clench my fist or something, it would be like someone's holding my hand as well and like pushing me to not let me do it. Mm. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, because I would expect it's that it... feeling of someone pressing you down and that you can't move. Oh, that's actually crazy. I would expect it to be more of like a like a loss of control thing, like a light kind of a thing. But it's the opposite. You're saying it's like it's like no. a weight on you. It's... So you can feel yeah, you can people... feel yourself like pulling against it. Yeah, that's crazy. Like imagine that you were laying on your back and then you, some person just lays on top of you just like straight up and you're like what the hell and you're trying to push them off but you can't i mean you wanted That's a crazy. gravity blanket the gravity blanket yeah the weighted the, blanket, the weighted blanket. Wow. yeah okay well now That's that free. makes me nervous um yeah, it's free but imagine having that on and then having sleep paralysis <laughs> that'd be a, weird yeah yeah i wouldn't huh. like that that'd be really awful but for most people they wake up and that's when they have sleep paralysis because their body hasn't fully woken up 
but mm. in my case i guess like the chemicals in my brain like the whatever tightens up your muscles it releases too early <laughs> before i've fallen asleep mm. and sometimes i can fight it like by moving my fingers and like it is the hardest thing physically to do try to fight it mm. but um That's i can wild. shake myself out of it and you mm. feel like your heart's racing you're like shit like no 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 because once you're in like you're locked in for mm. however long dang that's crazy. Yeah. Paralysis, LMAO, what do you mean? Just move. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that's like if you're homeless, if you're homeless, just buy a house. Like mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of facts though. If you're depressed, like just be happy. Like, yeah, fuck. like stupid yeah. idiot. Yeah. If you're bad at that Call is... of Duty, just get good. <laughs> okay. I mean, that, yeah. one's <laughs> that one's true. That one's true. But you sick. mentioned, uh, Cam, you said that you thought it would be like a light feeling. Um. It's more like a Yagami feeling. I was, oh I was. God, okay, dude. bro, bro, <laughs> bro. You are so funny. You are hilarious, my Jesus guess. Fucking Christ. Um, y'all love it. Um, yeah, there's... it's more of like a, like a, like as opposed to it being light. Like, I don't know how to fucking explain it. Like, I'm not saying it's like easier to move your hand. Like, it would feel like it was easier or whatever. It would just be like disconnected. Like, you wouldn't feel it at all, as opposed to feeling the mm. weight. Yeah. Mm. Um, it just reminds me that a common uh, thing that people see when they have the hallucinations in sleep paralysis is uh, like the sleep paralysis demon is what yep. they call it, which is like a shadow man, mm. and because it feels like something is like pressing down on you people have reported that they would feel like their bed like someone sat on it you know like that sinking feeling mm -hmm. they just feel uh. that all of a sudden or um they just wake up and open their eyes and there's like a figure right over them pressing against their chest so that's why you don't open your eyes when you're having sleep <laughs> paralysis because you don't know what you'll see God. Um, yeah. It's I think the the like accepted psychological, you know, uh, explanation for that. The 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 general one is the idea that like your brain is putting to piecing together as quickly as it can even though it just turned on basically like all the shadows and shapes and different stuff in your room and so it usually manifests into some sort of dark tall shadowy figure. Um mm -hmm. and then, yeah. you know, your brain's just doing its own thing, you know, playing movies on the back of your eyeballs. So, yeah. Yeah, it's you're still in that weird like dream state almost. So that's why you're hearing a bunch of yeah. things and your and then brain's it's like, turning on. Yeah, and then it's extreme it's like testing it, all your senses. <laughs> extreme activation of the flight or flight system is what they say causes a lot of it. Yeah, it's like that that flooding of like endorphins of like I'm gonna fucking die if I don't do something right now. It's like, but you can't move. It's just doubles, quadruples mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, and it's it scary. makes it worse. That's yeah. why you have to calm down, yeah, or else yeah, you can't yeah, move. Yeah, yeah. I think so, you know, uh, whenever you're going to bed, relax. Right. Don't uh don't spend like three days awake and then go to bed because that can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, eat yeah. well. That's that's elite. these were all things in high school I, not, I was not doing, so that's why I always have it. Don't Man. pull two all nighters in a row is an elite um tip. That's fun. life life pro tips. Go to sleep yeah. sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Never a good thing. I have an idea. What are you saying something else? Yeah, I was having an idea. Like going back to the David with the chips thing, I think <laughs> David could have a horror game. I I pictured it. Oh Imagine like Slender Man, but instead of Slender Man, it's David. And like when he gets close, you just hear the bag wrinkle. And you turn around and you see David. Bro, and it's like, it's you got... Daddy David. And then like <laughs> Daddy, Daddy David. <laughs> Bro, he, like, he just I like it. it would be terrifying. He, he like ad libs in the background. He's like, he's swimming in that money. <laughs> <laughs> what the yeah. Wait, what's the thing you do? It's like it's lit. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> we lit. lit. <laughs> Alex, what was the line that you sampled in your new track? Uh -huh. What was he saying? Oh, the heritage thing. The heritage hey, Black Ops cool. Well, you're starting fresh. You're starting fresh. <laughs> oh my god, that's a bar. That's an absolute Jeez. bar. That would be yeah. hilarious. Like my heritage, yeah. bro. <laughs> Oh my god. I like your cut, G. I like, <laughs> I like your cut, G, and you die. He just dies, yeah. yeah. Oh my god. I, I do have a, I guess not a story, but I mean, it's on my Instagram. It was, we, Rocio and I went to Holly and Horror Nights for our second date, uh, October 20th last year? 21st. 21st. Um, so it was more than a year now. 
but we that was before we were like officially dating and she took me to we were in universal and it's like the, the oh, main stretch this. of yeah it's like the main stretch of road after uh rip ride rocket and you're like right in front of the jimmy fallon ride and there's like these porta potties and inside you you never know what's in there like you know it could be like <laughs> an act like a scare actor sitting in there or whatever mm-hmm. but this one was oh okay man she, she was just like hey yo i want you to do this and i'm like I hated the idea of it. I was like, I don't want to do this at all. I don't want to open this door. I pull out my phone to make it. Yeah, she's totally recording me. Yeah, so oh I, just walk, I just walk up slowly and I'm just like, what is it? And wasn't there like a little like doll in there or like? Yeah, it was like some prop. Yeah, and next thing mm. I know, I'm just getting fucking shot in the face by water. Oh, <laughs> what? Like, it's a zombie. Yeah, it, that's it, supposed it to be like a zombie you. pissing on you. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember seeing that video from Rissio's perspective, and I like couldn't see the water on the video. So I was like, "What the fuck is happening here?" <laughs> so once yeah. once you explained it to me, once you he was like, "Whoa, what was in there?" Yeah, yeah. Once you explained it to me, because it looked like you were reacting to like getting hit by something, but I couldn't see anything. So yeah, no, I reacted very Just violently, a, like <laughs> a stream wow. of water. And it was like a weird hesitation too. Yeah. What if it was ghost pee? You can't see it on camera. Oh. oh. I, thought, I thought the thing with ghosts is that like you can see them on camera, but you can't see them in what? real life. What? What? I mean, what? I feel like there's there's competing like... ghost mythology. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, like, literally, go. literally everything has been said about the way ghosts work. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, uh, and uh, the, the found footage trope though is that like they can only see it on the camera. I think that's true. That's but true. Paranormal know. activity works well for that. Yeah. But in it's this a whole case, supernatural episode. Thinking, thinking that he has it on camera, but he doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Easy money. You had to so see scary. it to believe it. So Very Cameron, scary. Uh, Cameron, what COD thing were you talking about? Trevor had an interesting uh, moment. Also, Russia, I don't even remember what um, happened. Yeah. Yeah. Do you consider yourself <laughs> a, a a one who partakes in alcohol? Or I, I, guess, I don't know. Uh, legally, I have to say no. Legally. Okay. Uh, but in That's a couple yeah. months, yeah. Okay. <laughs> sure. All right. That was a... That was a I media trainer. As, as someone who's never once touched a drop of alcohol as the, you know, <laughs> sweet child that you are. Um, yes. You could drink Trevor under the table. You could also say That's that not even for... true. You could, That's not even true. I just hadn't could, drank in a while. If Trevor if Trevor and you went shot for shot, Trevor would be passed out after three, and you'd just be like... Oh, I don't have a, I don't have a great tolerance. You're going you gonna to get up, bro? I thought we were doing this. I'm definitely never anyway, participating in any shot for shot competition. Anyway, uh, you had you're yeah. asking to die. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, me neither. That's that sounds like a great way to ruin a Saturday night. Isn't that um, isn't that how the fucking Indiana Jones movies start? That that one. God. Oh was, yeah. Was it Temple of Doom? Yeah, I think so. Temple I think of Doom there's is the a, second one. I think there's a Black Widow scene as well. Raiders. There's one in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders. Yeah. yeah, when he meets the chick. And oh, she's just, like yeah, drinking. Yeah, yeah. Like, she hits one. like seventeen shots. It's ridiculous. Right. Yeah. I I hope that's me, <laughs> but I don't think that's no. True. It's I'm not you. So she's light, man. she's like ninety pounds. It goes right through her. Yeah, yeah. we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, a it's, months. I'm like 160, and it's still like one <laughs> shot. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, David drunk is like the best thing in the world, man. It is. Lovely. Nah. I, can't, I can't wait. He just gets more rambunctious and mm-hmm. and just outgoing, yeah. and extroverted. Like, yeah, Happened so quick, I can't even enjoy the drinks. Yeah, well, I mean, we have you and I have bad, um, like, managing of our time drinking. Like, we don't yeah. have a very good concept of how the alcohol hits us. You don't right. drink very often. So. That you, Trevor? Like, really? I don't. <laughs> you did dude, great I, last night. You cut yourself off like very fast. No, you did, yeah, you did for great sure. Last night, yeah. I had I had one shot of rum chata, and then I had a. Uh, this Mai Tai cocktail that I bought, and it was like 13%, and it was only like yeah. two shots of rum in it, and I was done. I was done for that. I was yeah, like, so you're essentially, if I have one more of these, I will I, die. I am dying to he hear what happened went last night. Four drinks <laughs> in. He essentially went four drinks in in like a matter of like 30 minutes, so he was like, yeah. I'm yeah. No. Um, mm. I'm, I'm cool. So I was sipping as well, um, and so we were on COD playing gunfight, and the way gunfight works is it just gives you like a random gun every two rounds, and then you fight the other team with it, and whatever move mm-hmm. on it cycles out and so we get this gun 
And Trevor's, we haven't, neither of us have played the oh. game in a while, so, like, new new fucking guns have been added to the game and shit, and he's like, ooh, what's this, what's this? He, like, likes the look of it or whatever, and I'm like... Let me, let me, like, let me make my case first, because okay. it looked right. just like, it looked just like the Black Ops 1 from Moss. Okay. And I had never seen that gun before. It must have been a variant of the gun that's it didn't look currently that different. in the game. It didn't look that different. It did. <laughs> it it was... looked like the fat from Moss from Black Ops 1. David, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah. That one. Yeah. You know, I don't think they changed the body. I think they just changed the sights for the fucking variants. So I think you're they definitely wrong. changed it because that that game was. That game, anyways. All right, no, 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 no. I mean, they cha- they don't change the variant the way the body looks for variants like in just in Modern Warfare. Okay. Well, then to me it looked much different. Either way, that's such a weak case for for what I have. Um. So <laughs> so he, he's like, oh, it's a three burst, like whatever. I'm like yeah dude you don't know this gun he's like what no like why would i know this gun like there's no fucking and i'm like dude it's the famas like this is this gun's been in the game since launch and we were we were like also talking about some other bullshit so he was like looking it up while that was happening and we play we play a few more rounds and he's like i, but, I was like i'll bet you like a hundred dollars dude like literally this gun. this is like the fourth one you unlock it's been in the game since launch. He's like, no, it hasn't. No, it has not. This is this gun. This gun is not in the game, Cameron. Like you are lying to me. You are lying to me straight up to my face. It's not. It's never been in the game. I've never seen this gun once in my entire fucking life. And so I'm like, okay, bro, sure. And so he looks it up and he's like, damn, I guess it was. And so once we get out of the game, I go and I look, and sure enough, it is the fourth one you unlock. It's assault rifle Delta. And he does the same thing, and he goes and looks, and he's like, I have this gun maxed out. <laughs> <laughs> he leveled it up all the way to level fucking 56 got every single attachment and everything and he fucking forgot it existed in the game when there's been a fucking famas in every modern warfare game <laughs> to be wow. fair i probably wow. maxed it out when it was when it was like double xp so you it probably took have, me like six you probably games did and then like, it i like, never use it yeah you probably did it on like three games on double xp weapon and shipment, shipment. and shipment yeah. yeah you probably did it it's dumb fast so yeah i probably it's, played five games with it max that i i laughed harder than i've laughed in a long time when you said i have it maxed <laughs> out I was like, bro, you were ready to die on this hill that this gun did Yo, not exist. I was adamant that it, you like, it looked literally like nothing I had ever used in that game. I'm like, like, no one uses this gun. I have never seen it in the kill feed, like, yeah. ever. No was, one fucking uses it. I gave him that because it is trash. Like, it's literally, it does not compare to the other guns in the class, so. But that was the Dang. funniest fucking thing to me when you were just, like, so, so confident. This This man who, like who rattles off the names of black ops two maps by like their landmark <laughs> features fucking six years later mm. uh, you don't mm. you, you mean to tell me you don't remember standoff no oh, i remember standoff our and raid our Obviously, xbox parties raid. All right. our xbox parties are the only reason are the sole reason they need to be able to have like record clips from the party yeah no i agree <laughs> that'd be super dope, man. that'd be hilarious there'd be there would be so many clips that we would have just like okay. stashed away somewhere. Yeah, no, we were laughing our ass off immediately. So I set up the recording gear for last night. So I'll edit that down and maybe turn it into something, but or maybe just keep it for myself. Yeah. <laughs> for yeah, yourself. Probably, probably beat off to it later, yeah. Personal collection. Yeah. Little, little beat off material. Put that in the homework folder. You don't. You don't have to go on Reddit that night. Not that night. Reddit. <laughs> Not, that <laughs> Not that night. Okay. All right. All right. Well, it's we're almost at two hours. You guys want to cut it? Yeah. yeah, I guess we should. We need to cut it. Cut it. That's scary. Like cutting someone's, cutting someone's throat, like in a horror movie. Yeah. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> That's the third time that David's done this, and we all just like, react to him. <laughs> Segway kings. Yes, Segway master kings. of horror. They call me. We are Segway all right. Kings. Daddy. Dave. Yes. <laughs> well, dang guys. Daddy segs. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna we turn hope around. This- I'm gonna turn around huh? in the dark tonight, and uh, and my door is gonna be open, and I'm gonna be like, I didn't remember opening my door. And then David peeks around the corner, and he goes, "Are you winning, son?" <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna go a bag of sun chips. Yeah, he's yeah. Be- <laughs> a bag of sun chips. He's got the garden salsa variant. <laughs> oh, you know that's what I have, yeah. Dude, garden salsa is the shit. Yeah, dude. I don't even eat anything, any other sun chips. No, if I have you a. Can't. If I mm-hmm. have a David eating chips based nightmare um, tonight, Rocio, I'm I'm calling you in the middle of the night to wake you up because it's your fault. Dude, I'd love to hear about it. <laughs> I would love to hear it. <laughs> I want to hear what David's favorite chip is, though. Like, is is it Sun Chips? 
Nah, my favorite chip. Oh man, it's gotta be purple some chips are F tier, by the way. Doritos locos. Doritos are good. I'm going with Cape Cod salt and vinegar, baby. Ooh, you yeah. fancy, huh? Okay, That's I'm dope. fancy. Like, like, just kill your freaking taste buds. You got like a weird built-up salt on them. Yep. Ugh. Mm. Nasty. No, the salt, so good. salt and vinegar chips and is a uh, is a is a slight masochistic experience, but you know. Yeah. It's just well, the, the sweet and spicy Doritos, the the black, or black, the purple bag. That's the. Oh shirt. yeah, the Chipotle those or whatever. Are, okay. Yeah, those are my favorite. Yeah. If I had them, I haven't had yeah. Doritos in so long. I would True, go. Yeah. I would go standard Cape Cod probably. You want to give them your uh, yeah. your favorite chip? Uh oh, here we go. Uh, I don't really Hot eat chips. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't okay. like any dry or crunchy food like that. What? Actually, you know what? There is an exception. Um, any Lay's salt and vinegar, I'll take that. Salt and vinegar okay. is amazing. Yeah. Or like I the dill it. pickle. Any that's like super unpopular. Dill pickle. Almost dill like pickle? The ch- yeah, dill pickle is good. That's yeah. super oh, gross. David, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I do like some sour cream and onion, though. I, I just like no, the not, unpopular oh, yeah. ones. I don't oh, know yeah. why. Barbecue Lay's. Ooh. Barbecue Lay's are my titties, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't no. like that. You don't you don't like barbecue lays? Mm. Barbecue lays are dope. pretty good. Barbecue lays are they're kind of overrated in my opinion, but this, this oh, wait, the sweet making me hungry. Nah, for, yeah, for sure. the sweet. I think it's the sweet and spicy like uh, barbecue variant. It's like a like a maroon bag of lays. I can't remember what it's called. That shit is good. It fucking tore my stomach up too. But damn, wow, well, when it happens. So that's the, how we're ending the podcast. No, 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 no. <laughs> we got to end it with session? Chester's fries. Okay. The Chester's hot fries. Oh, I'm, the, I just have the hot and spicy Cheetos or whatever the, as a kid. The hot mm-hmm. Cheetos. No, those are dope, man. The I didn't have the fries. Cheetos, oh, I never had that. I don't think. The jalapeno cheese for, or cheddar. Or <laughs> Cheetos are good. <laughs> the the jalapeno Cheetos. Yeah. Oh, my Cheezos, God. Jalapeno. Cheetos and your benzos. All right. So yeah. What is that? <laughs> Nice. Get a round of jalapeno poppers over here. Jalapeno. Okay. Jalapeninos. Well, I this hope this podcast has turned into <laughs> this shit. Show, so. <laughs> yeah. It's always. It's always. If you guys made it this far, we love you. Thank you for the continued support. I mm-hmm. hope you continue to listen to us and find us at least slightly entertaining. And scary and spooky. Spooky. <laughs> the chip Very conversation spooky. was scary. <laughs> oh, All right. Oh. I would okay. say stay safe for Halloween, but it's going to come out after Halloween. So hopefully everyone survived. Yeah. <laughs> if you're listening survive. to this. Uh... <laughs> Congratulations. Stay safe after Halloween, too. Yes. Of there you go. Also, I believe Halloween is a massive night for drunk driving accidents. So yeah, be careful. Please. Do not do not get behind the wheel. Do not drive and yes. stay away from the road. Exactly. Be, ca- true. be very careful. Yep. Very true. All right, All right family. Well, yeah, guys. You, you want to say goodbye to listeners first? Oh, okay, I'll do your thing. Peace out, baby. No, that's not what's <laughs> happening. You gotta have that first. I think you guys. I think you All guys right. should do it together at the end. I was gonna say we'll you guys should do it in unison. <laughs> unison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll for do sure. it together. Okay. Okay. We're, we're keeping thing. all this though. So yeah, 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 definitely. All right, guys. I was gonna come up with a new catchphrase. Now I forget it. Well, all right, well, you got time. I'll, I'll let you have it. It's been real. Whatever. No, trick it. Uh, pathetic, pathetic old. It's been real. I'm all sorry, right. I failed. All right. <laughs> no. All right. I love you all. Adios. Peace, Peace out, out baby. baby.